Good morning, Bear Nation. Today, in episode four of Back to Basics, we're going to talk about sanitation. <clears throat> sanitation is not the type of thing that gets most people all fired up, especially when it comes to preparedness, because most people for preparedness want the newest, coolest gun, like this one. Yes, that's a pink, pink Red Rider BB gun for rooster control. Um, poor sanitation. And if we lump into poor sanitation, the, the process of being unclean, bad drinking water kills more people on planet Earth than anything else. So it's important, which is why we're going to cover this again. I would encourage y'all, uh, if you would like this information presented in uh, whiteboard format, to check out our Prepper Classroom videos. We have a whole playlist here on YouTube called The Prepper Classroom, and welcome all the new people. We have a whole playlist called The Prepper Classroom, where you can follow along line by line by line. You can also... If you so choose, you don't have to, but if you so choose, in the store at barrendependent.com, you can get the Prepper Notebook that has every lesson from the Prepper Classroom already laid out in the notebook. And then if you want, you can also get the Teachable course, which lays out every Prepper Classroom episode with the notebook in an actual coursework setting where you can work through every one of them and itemize and prioritize and execute on every little thing. All that's in the store. But this is a recap of the back to basics of sanitation. The first question that comes to mind for most people is, where are you going to poop? Because, you know, we're Americans and we like to poop cleanly, efficiently, and often. And you see in a grid down scenario, um, once the water stops flowing in many, many, many places, the sewage will stop flowing too because water and sewage flowing is predicated on the successful flow of electrons. And people like to, certain people like to poo-poo the grid down scenario argument. Well, there'll never be an EMP. Well, yeah, homie, I don't know if you noticed, but we do get these things called hurricanes and tornadoes, flash floods, um, earthquakes, volcanoes, etc. cetera, uh, ice storms, snowstorms, grid down, <laughs> hell, just live in California, okay, grid down is a very common occurrence, extended grid down is a major issue, sewage stops flowing, water stops flowing, which means your toilet stops working, which means where you're going to go to poo, uh, highly recommend that you re research independent of this video, Humanure, human or H-U-M-A-N-U-R-E, humanure, like human plus manure, and composting toilets. They're really not difficult at all. In fact, you'll note back here, this is a uh, an outhouse. Uh, well, it's really the stall on your left, or does this river? I don't know. This one over here, that's the ladies' room. Okay, two stalls. This one here is the family bathroom, one stall with a tub and a shower, and this one here will be two stalls for the men. <clears throat> Composting toilets. The stalls will have buckets underneath them. You put a little bit of peat moss in the bottom. Yes, peat moss. You find that at any farm store or uh, garden center or anything like that. You put some peat moss in the bottom of the bucket. You do your business in the bucket, put a toilet lid on top of it or you know, whatever. And then when you're done, you put more peat moss on top of it and it keeps your waste from being exposed to the air, which keeps the smell down significantly and keeps all the bad stuff that's in your waste from flying around in the air for everybody else to enjoy. Okay, it's a very simple concept. When the bucket's full, you have to have a dedicated place to take the bucket to dump it. This is your human newer pile. You dump your dump into the humanure pile. Again, I encourage you strongly to <coughs> research on your own humanure and composting toilets, but it's a very simple concept. In here, we will also have hand wash sinks, as well as, like I said, a shower and tub in the center stall. 
and there's an underground drain that runs from here and the specificity of this building and how it's going to operate is a different video for a different time next um you probably want to stock things especially in today's uh logistical covid 19 -y, is it actually civil war ii question mark environment stock things like toilet paper you know a brother of mine said recently um people like to hang on to money some people like to hang on to money they said but you know not that long ago you couldn't have bought a roll of toilet paper for a thousand bucks because there wasn't any now we were good we never ran out of toilet paper because we're us but you might want to restock on your toilet paper there are also other ways to handle this rags is it gross sure but if you're grossed out by this maybe not the, the video for you rags and bleach and water and those are the poo rags Okay, that's a way that it was done uh, before disposable toilet paper was ever a thing. So, highly recommend you research that as well. Now, let's get to bleach. Bleach, you should have a bunch of it. <clears throat> bleach has approximately a six month shelf life. It's cheap, a couple bucks a gallon. You should have four to six to ten gallons just laying around at any one time for whatever, anyway. I mean, four is probably a good number depending on the size of your household and what you're doing with it. But four is a great place to start, and it's cheap. Now, in addition to that, you can get things like pool shock to make your own bleach. Pool shock is essentially sodium hypochloride. I believe that's correct. Um, and you can buy that stuff. It's like 70% concentrate. And it's like a teaspoon makes a quart. The instructions are on the side of the bottle. But, <clears throat> point being that bleach mixed bleach while it does have a shelf life the sodium hypochloride aka pool shock will keep in its dry form it's a chemical it, forever it'll keep forever and then you can make more bleach when you need it and then that bleach that you mix up has a six month shelf life good morning sweetheart um other things that you should probably be stocked up on vinegar vinegar is good for cleaning it's also good for making pickles it's also good for making hot sauce. It's also good for making marinades. It's also good for making salad dressings. It's also good for doing all kinds of things. Um, but vinegar is good for cleaning as well. Cleaning, disinfecting, <coughs> uh, all of that. Your personal sanitation, Q-tips, floss, toothpaste, toothbrushes, Razors, if you're into that kind of thing. Soap. What kind of soap? Hero Soap Company. Wash your dirty butthole. I think you can use promo code BEAR there. I literally did not plan this. I just happened to be drinking coffee out of this mug. Hero Soap Company. I think you can use promo code BEAR. Veteran owned. Goat's milk soap, essential oils, all the blah, blah, blahs. It's great soap. It, it'll make your dangly parts tingle. That's what you want, okay? So you want to have an inventory of soap to keep your dangly parts clean and tingly, all right? Because, listen, let's be honest. When your dangly parts are dirty, nobody wants to touch them. You shouldn't be touching them either. So you got to keep your dangly parts tingly. you got to keep them clean. Um, feminine hygiene products. If you're feminine, you should be concerned with your hygiene, and therefore you should have those products stocked. This is the type of thing that I let my wife be in charge of, because I don't know if I'm a heavy day, or a pearl girl, or a cup thing. I don't know. Not my department. So my wife handles those things, but the point is we have them. Um, <clears throat> you want to have the stuff to be able to clean your body and also to clean all of your stuff. This is where bleach is good. Uh, but rags, just cotton rags. Get a 100-pack bundle of cotton rags. It's good stuff. A big cleaning vessel. Mortar pans, they sell these plastic pans uh, in Home Depot for like five or six bucks. It's about six, eight inches deep and about 
a foot and a half wide by two foot long, maybe, called mortar pans. They're just black trays. Those are great for washing things. Uh, you can do dishes in them if you have three of them. If you have soapy water, rinsing water, and then disinfectant water, bop, 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 you know, three of them lined up, run your dishes through one, so forth, so on. You can do dishes without consuming a large amount of water. Understand also that your water storage is intimately tied to your ability to stay clean and sanitized, which is why I told you in the water storage video, you don't want to be that guy that's storing one gallon per person per day because you will use more than that for sure for cooking, cleaning, and drinking, <clears throat> whether it's cleaning your body or cleaning your stuff. And so, you know, dish soaps, uh, hand soaps, um, laundry detergents, um, borax, sodium bicarb, all of these things are very useful to have around. Um, and you should stockpile them, for sure you should stockpile them. The, again, the reason that we're stockpiling these things is because we don't want to get dirty, because if we get dirty, we get sick. We don't want to stay dirty. I mean, everybody knows if you have a wound and you don't keep it clean, it gets infected. That's a problem. Well, if you have a body and you don't keep it clean, it gets grody, and then you get sick, and you can get infected, and it's it's bad. Same thing with your stuff. You want your, you know, you don't want to have your EDC knife that you were just cutting open the carcass of a goat, you know, and you haven't cleaned it, or a chicken, rather. Let's say it's a chicken. You just butchered a chicken with your EDC knife. You sheath that thing. Well, now you got chicken guts down inside your sheath, and every time you pull it out and you're cutting up your dinner with it, you're getting the salmonella chicken guts all over everything you're eating. That's just bad hygiene. So sanitation is important. And like I said, it's not super high-speed, ultra-tactical sexy, but it's important. The last thing you should think about, F it, whatever, it's YouTube, who cares? Bodies, what are you gonna do with bodies? Bodies of what? Well, let's just say chickens and goats. Butchering. Where do the carcasses go? Well, I'll just dig a hole, bear. You ever dug a hole big enough for a body? I have. It's not enjoyable. Compost is a great way to handle this. Body bags are temporary, temporary solutions, by the way, for those who are thinking that. And yes, hashtag body bag. Have you been here long enough to even know what hashtag body bag is? If you have, bless you. You're awesome. However, you got to have a place to put the bodies and body bags are temporary. They're not a forever solution. So a thing like let's say when we butcher cows or back in the day when we would butcher a cow, we would dig a hole before we butchered the cow. We had a backhoe, praise the father, but we'd dig a hole. And then we would butcher the cow and the front bucket of the backhoe would end up full of cow guts and carcass and skin and head and all the things and then it would get dumped in the hole and we push the dirt back over the top of it and handled but you don't want that stuff exposed a for disease and b for predators you don't want to be attracting predators bodies just lay around de laying around decomposing are very bad for sanitation um, they create lots of flies. Flies uh, can be tied to the spreading of disease. <clears throat> and they attract predators. Uh, they attract all types of unwanted attention. So what are you going to do with bodies? And of course, I'm talking about four-legged animals here. You know what I mean. But composting works great for us. Robust compost pile. Some other quick tips, uh, having some three mil and or six mil plastic and a couple rolls of duct tape, plastic sheeting and duct tape is a good way to create a sick bay or cordon off a room if you need to, if you had to hard quarantine somebody. Uh, bed pants are good to get if you have somebody that's terribly sick and cannot move. Um, being able to slide a bed pan underneath them is much better than having to change the sheets underneath them. Having lots of sheets and towels and blankets and a way to clean those. A giant freaking cauldron and a way to heat it up to heat water in it to do laundry in if the grid goes down is a 
good thing to think about. I mean, this could be a 55 gallon steel drum if it's all you can get. Awesome. Do it. Figure it out, figure out how to get hot water in it and wash clothes in it. Disinfect things in it. Um, all of those nursing things, sanitation and hygiene, you know, face coverings for when they're actually needed, not because hashtag sheeple, hashtag tyranny, um, nitrile gloves, drapes, things of that nature. But this stuff is important. You don't want to be dirty because dirty people get really sick. Dirty wounds get infected. Um, dirty equipment spreads uh, disease, spreads infection, gets people sick. I mean, just how are you going to clean your cutting board? Just that one thing right there. How are you going to clean your cutting board? And the reason I bring all this up is because we live it. And so it seems... Most see one of my favorite quotes is idealism, idealism increases with distance from the problem. So most people who don't live it or don't do it regularly think they think that I'll just do it this way. Well, in actuality, it's not that. And so I'm just trying to give you all some pointers uh, so that you don't make the mistakes that we did so that you have you the things that you need to do the things that you need to do. And with that, I wish you all a happy day. Shalom.